it never would occur to me that there's some person out there that knows how to take a paintbrush and paint and glaze and make marble on a piece of wood. It would just never occur to me that somebody did that. Each person has a very important function, and it's basically up to myself and the head painter to decide and delegate who should go where and do what. That's giving, that's giving that the life that it's looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm employed in the paint department as a foreman and lead scenic artist. And that basically uh, involves me um, supervising a crew. Um, we're all liaise with the head painter, all liaise with the art director and the production designer. And I work both on location and in the studio. If we get a top glaze on this, I think we'll be in the ballpark, make the art director happy. Ultimately, it's their call. I think this will get us there. When all these pieces get moved together, then they start to form something. Sitting on a table like this, it looks pretty boring. But, uh, you know, when this is laid out on the floor, hopefully in this uh, mansion that we have a reference picture for, some stunt person is going to come crashing on that, and hopefully this will look like the floor. Construction and paint are brother and sister departments. We really don't have much to paint and work on until it's built. It's going to be a little boy's bedroom, and so at this point, uh, it's been painted, then we dust aged it, which we just sort of, we took some glaze and tinted it down and, and just sort of floated a dusty color on it. Now that has to get dressed. This is the look they wanted. It's supposed to be some grungy bar bathroom somewhere downtown and years of use and abuse. And uh, it's got me convinced that uh, I wouldn't use that bathroom if I didn't have to. There's no course anywhere that I'm aware of where you can learn how to make that paint peel. That's just industry secrets. But it's not, you know, it's, they're not secrets, but those, those are skills and crafts that are just sort of used by us and not anybody else. I think this is in another bar, another club. It's just simply the look, bamboo walls. It's not too ugly. This is not really a real elevator. I mean, it looks real, it's, everything works, the doors move. From the camera's perspective, they can't see the two, uh, it'd be special effects guys or stunt guys would be behind and they'd be opening and closing these doors. There's just no way you're gonna know that. It doesn't go anywhere, it's just simply a box. And there, now we've been locked in and the camera opens, so there you think, wow. This is, this is just uh, what we call banana board and we would have just taken uh, um, plaster, type of plaster, and put it on rough and give it some texture. Uh, the door frame is a real metal door frame, but what we would have done or what we did do is we just took uh, some stains and washes and gummed it up and made it look really old. So it just, it looks like it's been around forever. Well, then we would just start working some uh, wax, tinted wax and so forth to give it that real look. What you see around the door lock, we would typically call aging and we'll come up with tinted waxes and sort of dab it on. Well, and that's the beauty of this industry. I never know when I come in on a day-to-day -day basis what I'm gonna be asked to do. Um, so it's kind of always having your wits about you, having an assortment of, of tools and equipment always at the ready and being able to say, yep, I gotta go, gotta go and go downtown and, and match marble uh, on the set or wood grain on a set, so. It's kind of fun. There's always more than one thing going on at one time. The wood's real, but the gray part is actually styrofoam. Well, that should fool them. It does more often than not. Ultimately, we're the last people to see and touch the set before it gets dressed and before they actually shoot it. This is the before shot. I think most people would be pretty surprised to see the after shot and go, wow. I mean, that, that isn't real stone. But if we are uh, demonstrating uh, our skills, proper technique really requires that I have a mask on. We're going to be spraying on top of the uh, castle walls to give us some texture on there. It's not an exact science. You just get to know what it works.
having a sense of color and design, uh, knowing how to use uh, the related equipment and, and having a good steady hand. Those are all useful things to have. In this particular picture, this is uh, supposed to be a, uh, a set at a high school. It's a little rougher than we would do in the film industry, but it's not supposed to look professional. It's supposed to look like high school students have done this. Most people that I've spoken to in the paint department can't stand to be on set. They don't want to be around it. It's, it can be very stressful. I've taken direction from directors and ADs. I've had my on-set kit literally beside the camera. It's an amazing buzz to be a part of a film crew. This industry is employing a far greater range of people with a far greater background. It's an exciting industry and we're always looking for new talent. Take some photographs of what you do. Document what you do and who you worked with and start building a portfolio. That's really, really important. If you're out there and you have talent or you think you have talent, um, come on in, make the application, knock on the doors, ask the questions. Don't get frustrated. It's a hard industry to get into, but the rewards are fantastic.